Every day, a young black girl named Ashley waves at Officer Charlie as he passes by on his patrol. But one morning, when she's not in her usual spot, a sense of dread overwhelms him. Rushing to her house, Charlie is met with a heartbreaking revelation that leaves him in tears. What devastating truth did he uncover that changed everything? Before we get into the story, comment below where in the world you are watching from today. And if you like this story, don't forget to subscribe. Officer Charlie Brick stepped onto the sidewalk, his polished shoes tapping a steady rhythm as he began his daily patrol. The crisp morning air nipped at his cheeks, but he barely noticed. His eyes were fixed on the familiar corner up ahead. As he approached, his heart lifted. There she was, right on time. Four-year-old Ashley stood at her window, her small hand raised in a cheerful wave. Charlie's face softened into a warm smile, and he raised his own hand in return. This simple exchange had become the brightest part of Charlie's day. In a job that often left him feeling alone, this moment of connection meant more than he could express. Morning, Ashley, he murmured to himself, his voice barely above a whisper. Charlie's steps slowed as he passed the house, savoring the moment. Ashley's big brown eyes sparkled with joy, and her gap-toothed grin was as bright as ever. But today, Charlie noticed something different. The little girl seemed paler than usual and dark circles shadowed her eyes. A twinge of worry tugged at Charlie's heart. He pushed it aside, telling himself he was imagining things. Kids got tired sometimes, right? It was probably nothing. As he continued down the street, Charlie found his thoughts drifting back to Ashley. He remembered the first time he'd seen her at that window, barely tall enough to peek over the sill. Now she was a big girl of seven, but her wave hadn't changed a bit. Charlie's own childhood hadn't been filled with such simple joys. His family life had been tough, leaving him with scars that still ached. Maybe that's why Ashley's daily greeting meant so much to him. It was a reminder that the world could be kind even in small ways. The officer's radio crackled, snapping him back to the present. He answered the call, but his mind was still on that little girl in the window. Charlie had no idea how much his presence meant to Ashley, or the battles she was quietly fighting behind that cheerful wave. As he turned the corner, leaving Ashley's house behind, Charlie made a silent promise. Tomorrow, he'd wave a little longer, smile a little brighter. Because sometimes, the smallest gestures can make the biggest difference. Charlie continued his patrol, his mind still lingering on Ashley's wave. The familiar streets of the neighborhood seemed to blur together as he walked, lost in thought. He'd been a police officer for over two decades now, and while he took pride in his work, it often left him feeling isolated. The long hours, the unpredictable shifts, and the emotional toll of the job had slowly chipped away at his personal life. Now at middle age, Charlie found himself alone. No wife, no kids, no family to speak of. His own parents and siblings were distant memories, their relationship strained by years of misunderstandings and unspoken hurts. Charlie had learned to live with the loneliness, but that didn't make it any easier. As he turned another corner, Charlie's thoughts drifted back to Ashley. He realized he knew very little about her or her family. Was there a dad in the picture? Did she have siblings? He'd never seen anyone else in that window, just the little girl with the big smile. Yet, despite knowing so little, Charlie felt a deep connection to Ashley. Their daily exchange had become more than just a wave. It was a lifeline, a small spark of joy in his otherwise solitary routine. Charlie checked his watch, noting the time. In a few hours, he'd be back on this street, and Ashley would be there, waiting to wave. The thought brought a smile to his face, warming him from the inside out. It was funny, Charlie mused, how such a simple thing could mean so much. That little wave had become the highlight of his day, a moment of pure, uncomplicated happiness in a world that often felt cold and indifferent. As he continued his patrol, Charlie found himself looking forward to tomorrow's wave with an eagerness that surprised him. It was more than just a nice gesture now. It was a reminder that he wasn't completely alone in the world, that someone, even a child he barely knew, saw him and acknowledged him every day. Charlie's radio crackled, pulling him back to the present, he answered the call, his voice steady and professional. But even as he focused on his duties, a part of him held on to the warmth of Ashley's wave, 
carrying it with him like a shield against the loneliness of his days. The next morning dawned bright and clear, but Charlie's heart felt heavy as he approached the familiar corner. His eyes scanned the window where Ashley always stood, but today, the space was empty. No smiling face, no tiny hand waving hello. Charlie's steps faltered, and a chill ran down his spine. He tried to shake off the feeling of dread that washed over him. Maybe Ashley was just running late, or perhaps she wasn't feeling well. But something in his gut told him this wasn't right. The absence of that small, daily ritual left a gaping hole in his morning. Without thinking, Charlie stopped to the curb. He stood for a moment, staring at the silent house. The curtains were drawn and the whole place seemed unnaturally still. Taking a deep breath, he walked up the path to the front door. His hand hesitated for a second before he knocked. The sound seemed too loud in the quiet morning air. Charlie waited, his heart pounding in his chest. He was about to knock again when he heard footsteps approaching from inside. The door opened slowly, revealing a woman Charlie had never seen before. Her eyes were red and puffy, and her face was etched with worry. This must be Ashley's mother, he realized. Hello, ma'am, Charlie said softly. I'm Officer Brick. I... I usually see Ashley waving from the window in the mornings. When she wasn't there today, I got worried. Is everything okay? The woman's face crumpled at the mention of Ashley's name. She tried to speak, but a sob caught in her throat. Charlie felt his heart sink even further. I'm Gloria, Ashley's mom, she managed to say, her voice barely above a whisper. Ashley, she's... she's not well. We had to take her to the hospital last night. Charlie felt like the ground had dropped out from under him. He'd known Ashley was important to him, but he hadn't realized just how much until this moment. I'm so sorry, he said, his own voice thick with emotion. Is there anything I can do to help? Gloria shook her head, tears streaming down her face. Thank you, but we're just waiting now. The doctors are doing tests. Charlie nodded, feeling helpless. He wanted to do more, to say more, but he didn't know how. If you need anything, anything at all, please don't hesitate to call the station. Ask for Officer Brick. Gloria nodded, managing a weak smile. Thank you, Ashley. She always looked forward to waving to you. It meant so much to her. Charlie felt a lump form in his throat. It meant a lot to me, too, he said softly. Gloria took a deep breath, trying to steady herself. Her hands trembled as she gripped the doorframe, seeking support. Charlie stood there, his heart heavy with concern, waiting for her to speak. Ashley, Gloria began, her voice barely above a whisper. She's been sick for a while now. We, we didn't tell anyone. We thought we could handle it on our own. Charlie felt a lump form in his throat. He wanted to reach out to offer comfort, but he held back, unsure of what to do. Gloria continued, her words coming out in a rush. The doctors, they say it's rare. Something called a plastic anemia. Her body, it's not making enough blood cells. Her voice broke on the last word, and she covered her mouth with her hand, trying to stifle a sob. Charlie's mind reeled. He thought of Ashley's bright smile, her tiny hand waving at him every morning. How could someone so full of life be so ill? He felt a deep ache in his chest a mixture of shock and sorrow. Life-threatening, Gloria whispered, the words hanging heavy in the air between them. That's what they told us. If we can't find a match for a bone marrow transplant, she couldn't finish the sentence. Tears streamed down her face and her shoulders shook with silent sobs. Charlie stood there, frozen, the full weight of the situation crashing down on him. He had no words, no comfort to offer in the face of such devastating news. All this time, while he had been finding joy in Ashley's simple gesture, the little girl and her mother had been fighting a silent battle. Charlie felt a wave of guilt wash over him. He should have known, should have seen that something was wrong. I... I'm so sorry, Charlie finally managed to say, his voice thick with emotion. I had no idea. Is there anything... anything at all I can do? Gloria shook her head, wiping at her tears with the back of her hand. You've already done so much, Officer Brick. Your daily waves. 
They meant the world to Ashley. It was something she looked forward to, something that made her feel normal. Charlie felt his own eyes begin to water. He blinked rapidly, trying to maintain his composure. But inside, he felt lost, helpless in the face of this heartbreaking revelation. Charlie felt a wave of determination wash over him. He couldn't just stand by and do nothing. Taking a deep breath, he looked at Gloria with resolve in his eyes. Gloria, I know we don't know each other well, but I want to help. Whatever you need, rides to the hospital, someone to talk to, anything at all. I'm here for you and Ashley, Charlie said, his voice steady and sincere. Gloria's eyes welled up with fresh tears, but this time there was a glimmer of gratitude in them. Thank you, Officer Brick. That means more than you know. Charlie nodded, his mind already racing with ways he could support this family in need. I'll stop by the hospital this evening to check on Ashley, if that's okay with you. Gloria managed a small smile. She'd like that, she always talks about the nice police officer who waves to her. Later that evening, Charlie found himself walking down the sterile hallways of the children's ward. The smell of disinfectant filled his nostrils, and the beeping of machines echoed in his ears. His heart pounded as he approached Ashley's room. Nothing could have prepared him for the sight that greeted him. Ashley, the vibrant little girl who had brightened his mornings for years, lay pale and small in the hospital bed. Tubes and wires connected her to various machines that blinked and hummed around her. Charlie's breath caught in his throat. He had seen many tough things in his years as a police officer. But this, this was different. This was personal. Ashley's eyes fluttered open as he entered the room. Despite her weakened state, a small smile spread across her face. Officer Charlie, she whispered, her voice barely audible. Charlie moved to her bedside, careful not to disturb any of the equipment. Hey there, Ashley, he said softly, trying to keep his voice steady. I missed your wave this morning. Ashley's smile grew a little wider. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to worry you. Charlie felt his heart constrict. Here was this brave little girl, apologizing to him while fighting for her life. He gently took her small hand in his. Don't you worry about that. You just focus on getting better, okay? As he sat there, holding Ashley's hand and chatting softly with her and Gloria, Charlie marveled at how deeply this child had touched his life. He had always looked forward to her waves, but he never realized just how much they meant to him until now. Looking at Gloria's tired face and Ashley's brave smile, Charlie made a silent promise. He would be there for them, every step of the way. Whatever they needed, he would make sure they had it. I'll be back tomorrow, Charlie said as he prepared to leave. And the day after that, and the day after that. You're not alone in this, okay? Charlie's visits to Ashley's hospital room became a regular part of his routine. He'd stop by after his shift, sometimes bringing small gifts like coloring books or stuffed animals. The sterile hospital room slowly transformed, filled with drawings and cheerful decorations. One evening, Charlie arrived to find Gloria sitting alone by Ashley's bedside. The little girl was sleeping peacefully, her chest rising and falling steadily. Gloria looked up as Charlie entered, offering a tired smile. How's she doing today? Charlie asked softly, settling into the chair next to Gloria. Gloria sighed, her eyes never leaving her daughter's face. She had a good day. The doctors are cautiously optimistic. Charlie nodded, relief washing over him. They sat in comfortable silence for a while, the only sounds the gentle beeping of machine is, and Ashley's soft breathing. After a few minutes, Gloria turned to Charlie, her eyes shining with unshed tears. You know, Officer Brick, Charlie, I never told you why Ashley started waving to you every morning. Charlie leaned forward, curiosity peaked. I always wondered about that, he admitted. Gloria took a deep breath her voice wavering slightly as she began to speak. Ashley's father, my husband, he passed away three years ago. Before that, every morning, he'd wave goodbye to Ashley from his car as he left for work. Charlie felt a lump form in his throat as Gloria continued. After he died, Ashley was heartbroken. She'd stand by the window every morning waiting for a wave that would never come. Gloria paused, wiping a tear from her cheek. Then one day, 
She saw you driving by in your patrol car. You reminded her so much of her dad in his uniform. Charlie's heart ached as he began to understand the significance of Ashley's daily ritual. She started waving to you because it made her feel close to her father again, Gloria explained, her voice thick with emotion. It became her way of honoring his memory and keeping that connection alive. Charlie sat back, overwhelmed by the revelation. All this time, he had thought Ashley's wave was just a friendly gesture from a sweet little girl. He had no idea it held such deep meaning for her. I... I had no idea, Charlie said, his voice barely above a whisper. Thank you for telling me, Gloria. It means so much to know that. Gloria reached out and squeezed Charlie's hand. Thank you for being there for her. For us. You've become such an important part of our lives. As Charlie looked at Ashley's sleeping form, he felt a renewed sense of purpose. He wasn't just a friendly face to her. He was a link to her father, a source of comfort and continuity in her young life. The weight of this realization settled on his shoulders, not as a burden but as a precious responsibility. Charlie sat in silence for a moment, processing Gloria's words. The weight of Ashley's daily wave settled on his heart, filling him with a mix of emotions he couldn't quite name. He looked at the sleeping child, her small frame dwarfed by the hospital bed, and felt a surge of protectiveness wash over him. Gloria, he said softly, turning to face her. I want you to know that I'm here for you both, not just as a police officer, but as, as a friend. Is there anything I can do to help? Gloria's eyes welled up with tears. Oh, Charlie, she whispered, her voice cracking. You've already done so much. Just being here means the world to us. Charlie shook his head, determination setting in. I want to do more. Please let me help with errands or anything else you need. You shouldn't have to face this alone. Over the next few weeks, Charlie became a constant presence in their lives. He'd stop by the hospital every day, sometimes bringing groceries for Gloria or new coloring books for Ashley. On days when Gloria looked particularly exhausted, he'd insist she go home for a few hours to rest, promising to stay with Ashley. During these times, Charlie would sit by Ashley's bedside, reading her stories or simply talking to her in a soft voice. He told her about his day on patrol, about the funny things he'd seen, always careful to keep his tone light and cheerful. One afternoon, as Charlie was helping Gloria sort through a pile of medical bills, Ashley stirred in her sleep. Daddy, she mumbled, her eyes fluttering open. Charlie and Gloria exchanged a look, their hearts breaking a little. Charlie moved to Ashley's side, gently taking her hand. Hey there, sweetheart, he said softly. It's Charlie. Your mom's here too. Ashley blinked, focusing on Charlie's face. A small smile spread across her lips. Officer Charlie, she said, her voice weak but happy. You're here. Charlie felt his throat tighten with emotion. Of course I'm here, kiddo. I wouldn't miss our daily wave for anything. Ashley's smile grew wider. Can we wave now? She asked, lifting her hand slightly. Charlie nodded, his eyes misty. You bet we can. As they waved to each other, Charlie felt something shift inside him. This wasn't just about honoring a promise or doing a good deed. Ashley and Gloria had become family to him, filling a void he hadn't even realized was there. Moments later, Charlie stood in the hallway outside Ashley's room, his world spinning. The doctor's words echoed in his ears, each syllable a hammer blow to his heart. Ashley's condition was deteriorating faster than anticipated. The prognosis was grim. He leaned against the wall, his legs suddenly weak. Through the small window in the door, he could see Gloria sitting by Ashley's bedside, her shoulders shaking with silent sobs. Charlie's chest tightened, a lump forming in his throat. Unable to bear the sight any longer, he pushed himself off the wall and began walking. His feet carried him aimlessly through the sterile hospital corridors, his mind a whirlwind of emotions. Nurses and doctors bustled past him, but Charlie barely noticed them. He felt like he was moving through a fog, everything around him muted and distant. 
As he walked, memories of Ashley's bright smile and cheerful wave flooded his mind. He remembered the first time he'd seen her in the hospital, so small and fragile, yet still radiating hope. Now that hope seemed to be slipping away and Charlie felt utterly helpless. He found himself in the hospital's small chapel empty save for a few flickering candles. Charlie sank into a pew, his head in his hands. He wasn't a religious man, but right now, he yearned for some kind of guidance, some way to make sense of the unfairness of it all. As he sat there in the quiet chapel, Charlie's resolve began to solidify. He couldn't change Ashley's diagnosis, but he could be there for her and Gloria. He would stand by them no matter what happened. The thought of abandoning them now was unthinkable. Charlie straightened up, wiping his eyes. He needed to be strong for them. His mind began to race, thinking of ways he could offer more support. Maybe he could reach out to the community, organize some kind of fundraiser to help with the mounting medical bills. Or perhaps he could arrange for some of Ashley's friends from school to visit her, to bring a bit of normalcy and joy to her hospital room. With a deep breath, Charlie stood up. He felt a new sense of purpose coursing through him. He couldn't change the outcome, but he could make sure that Ashley and Gloria didn't face this alone. As he walked back towards Ashley's room, his steps were steady and determined. Whatever lay ahead, he would be there, offering his unwavering support and love. Charlie returned to the precinct, his mind still at the hospital with Ashley and Gloria. He slumped into his chair, staring blankly at the pile of paperwork on his desk. The words on the reports blurred together, meaningless in the face of Ashley's struggle. Officer Rodriguez, Charlie's partner, noticed his unusual behavior. Hey, Brick, he said, concern in his voice. You okay? You look like you've seen a ghost. Charlie blinked, trying to focus on his colleague. I'm fine, he mumbled, but his voice lacked conviction. Rodriguez wasn't convinced. He pulled up a chair and sat next to Charlie. Come on, man. Something's eating at you. What's going on? Charlie hesitated, unsure how to explain the bond he'd formed with a little girl he barely knew. But as he looked around the precinct, he saw genuine concern on the faces of his fellow officers. These people were more than just colleagues, they were his second family. With a deep sigh, Charlie began to speak. There's this little girl, Ashley. She used to wave at me every morning on my patrol route. His voice cracked slightly as he continued. She's in the hospital now. It's... it's not looking good. The room fell silent as Charlie shared Ashley's story. He told them about her daily waves, the connection to her late father, and her current battle with a rare illness. As he spoke, Charlie felt a weight lifting from his shoulders. Officer Chen, a usually stoic veteran, wiped a tear from her eye. That's heartbreaking, Charlie. Is there anything we can do to help? Charlie looked up, surprised by the outpouring of support. I... I don't know. I just feel so helpless. Sergeant Thompson, who had been listening quietly, spoke up. We're not helpless, Brick. We're a team, and we take care of our own. This little girl is important to you, so she's important to us. Other officers began chiming in with ideas. Rodriguez suggested organizing a fundraiser to help with medical bills. Chen proposed reaching out to local media to raise awareness about Ashley's condition. Officer Patel offered to coordinate with local businesses for donations. As his colleagues rallied around him, Charlie felt a glimmer of hope for the first time in days. He realized he wasn't alone in this fight. With the support of his police family, maybe he could make a real difference for Ashley and Gloria. Charlie's heart swelled with gratitude as he watched his colleagues brainstorm ideas to help Ashley. Their enthusiasm and compassion touched him deeply. For the first time in days, a spark of hope flickered in his chest. With newfound determination, Charlie stood up. I need to speak with the captain, he announced. He made his way to Captain Ramirez's office, his mind racing with possibilities. Knocking on the door, he heard a gruff, come in. Charlie entered, standing tall before his superior. Captain, I have a proposal, he began, his voice steady despite his nerves. Captain Ramirez looked up from his paperwork, raising an eyebrow. Go on, Brick. Taking a deep breath, Charlie explained Ashley's situation and the precinct's desire to help. We'd like to organize a fundraiser, sir, for Ashley's medical bills. The captain listened intently, his expression softening as Charlie spoke. 
When Charlie finished, there was a moment of silence that felt like an eternity. Finally, Captain Ramirez nodded. Approved, Officer Brick. This department stands behind its community. Let me know what resources you need. Relief washed over Charlie. Thank you, sir. This means more than you know. Returning to the bullpen, Charlie shared the good news. The room erupted in cheers and applause. Officer Chen immediately started making calls to local businesses. Rodriguez began drafting a press release. The entire precinct buzzed with activity. As Charlie watched his colleagues spring into action, he felt a warmth spread through his chest. This wasn't just about raising money. It was about showing Ashley and Gloria that they weren't alone. For the first time in days, Charlie allowed himself to smile. He pictured the look on Gloria's face when he told her about the fundraiser. He imagined Ashley's eyes lighting up at the news that so many people cared about her. With renewed energy, Charlie joined his colleagues in their planning efforts. As they worked late into the night, he felt a sense of purpose he hadn't experienced in years. This fundraiser might not cure Ashley, but it could bring some light into her and Gloria's lives during this dark time. As he left the precinct that night, Charlie's steps felt lighter. Tomorrow, he would visit the hospital with news that might just bring a smile to Ashley's face. For the first time since learning of her illness, Charlie felt truly hopeful. Next day, Charlie's heart raced as he approached Ashley's hospital room. He paused at the door, taking a deep breath before knocking gently. Gloria's tired voice called out, Come in. As he entered, Charlie's eyes immediately went to Ashley's small form on the bed. She looked even paler than before, her chest rising and falling with shallow breaths. Gloria sat beside her, holding her daughter's hand, dark circles under her eyes. Charlie, Gloria said, managing a weak smile. It's good to see you. Charlie pulled up a chair next to Gloria. How is she doing? He asked softly, his eyes never leaving Ashley's face. Gloria's shoulders sagged. Not good, she whispered, her voice cracking. The doctors say, they say her condition is getting worse. Charlie's heart clenched at the news. He reached out and placed a comforting hand on Gloria's shoulder. I'm so sorry, Gloria, but I have some news that might help, even if just a little. Gloria looked up at him, curiosity mixing with the worry in her eyes. The entire police department has come together, Charlie began, his voice filled with warmth. We're organizing a fundraiser for Ashley's medical bills. The whole community is getting involved. For a moment, Gloria sat in stunned silence. Then tears welled up in her eyes. Charlie, I... I don't know what to say, she stammered, her voice thick with emotion. You don't have to say anything, Charlie assured her. We all want to help. You and Ashley aren't alone in this. Gloria's tears spilled over and she clasped Charlie's hand tightly. Thank you, she whispered. Thank you so much. As Charlie watched Gloria process the news, he noticed a small change in her demeanor. Her shoulders straightened slightly, and a tiny spark appeared in her eyes. It was just a glimmer, but it was there. A flicker of hope amidst the darkness. Gloria, Charlie said gently, I know things are tough right now, but remember, you have an entire community standing behind you. We're all here, ready to support you and Ashley however we can. Gloria nodded, wiping her tears. She looked at Ashley, then back at Charlie. It means more than you know she said softly. Sometimes it feels like we're fighting this battle alone, but knowing there are people out there who care, it helps. Charlie squeezed her hand. Stay strong, Gloria. For Ashley, we're all rooting for her and for you. The day of the fundraiser arrived and Charlie's heart swelled with hope as he watched people stream into the community center. The turnout was far beyond what he had expected. Officers from his precinct, Neighbors and even strangers from nearby towns filled the space, all united by their desire to help little Ashley. Charlie stood near the entrance, greeting people with a warm smile and a heartfelt, thank you for coming. He couldn't help but feel a lump in his throat as he saw the generosity pouring in. People brought toys, stuffed animals, and colorful cards for Ashley. Others wrote checks or dropped cash into donation boxes. 
One of Charlie's fellow officers, Jim, clapped him on the back. You did good, Brick, he said, his voice gruff with emotion. Look at all these people. They're here because of you. Charlie shook his head, feeling humbled. No, they're here for Ashley, he replied softly. As the day went on, Charlie was touched by the stories he heard. A young mother approached him, holding her toddler's hand. We don't have much, she said, her eyes shining with tears. But we wanted to help. She handed Charlie a small envelope. It's not a lot, but it's what we could spare. Charlie thanked her, his voice thick with emotion. He watched as she walked away, realizing how Ashley's story had touched so many hearts. The local fire department showed up in full force, bringing a shiny red truck for kids to explore. They also presented a check that left Charlie speechless. We took up a collection, the fire chief explained. Ashley's one of our own, even if we've never met her. As the afternoon wore on, Charlie was amazed by the creativity of the community. A local band played uplifting songs, filling the air with music. Children ran a lemonade stand, proudly announcing that all proceeds would go to Ashley. A group of high school students organized a bake sale, their table piled high with homemade treats. Charlie's eyes misted over as he looked around the bustling community center. The outpouring of love and support was overwhelming. He thought of Ashley lying in her hospital bed and wished she could see how many people were rooting for her. As the event began to wind down, Charlie's captain approached him. Brick, he said, his voice filled with pride. I've never seen anything like this. You've brought the whole community together. Charlie nodded, unable to speak for a moment. When he finally found his voice, it was thick with emotion. I just wanted to help, he said simply. I had no idea it would turn into this. His captain squeezed his shoulder. This is what community is all about, Brick. You've reminded us all of that. The next day, Charlie walked through the sterile hospital corridors, his arms laden with colorful gifts from the fundraiser. The smell of disinfectant filled his nostrils as he made his way to Ashley's room, his heart light with the hope of bringing a smile to her face. But as he turned the corner, he saw Gloria slumped against the wall, her shoulders shaking with silent sobs. Charlie's steps faltered, and a cold dread washed over him. Gloria? He called softly, quickening his pace. She looked up, her face streaked with tears. Oh, Charlie, she whispered, her voice breaking. Charlie set the gifts down on a nearby chair and knelt beside her. What happened? He asked, his heart pounding. Gloria took a shuddering breath. Ashley's condition... It's gotten worse, she said, fresh tears spilling down her cheeks. The doctors, they're running out of options. Charlie felt as if the floor had dropped out from under him. He'd known Ashley was seriously ill, but hearing these words made it painfully real. He struggled to find something to say, anything that might comfort Gloria, but words failed him. I don't know what to do, Gloria continued, her voice barely above a whisper. I feel so helpless. Charlie understood that feeling all too well. He'd faced dangerous situations as a police officer, but nothing had prepared him for this. He felt utterly powerless, unable to protect the little girl who had become so important to him. Can I... can I see her? Charlie asked, his voice rough with emotion. Gloria nodded, wiping her eyes. She's been asking for you, she said. I think she sensed something was wrong. Charlie helped Gloria to her feet, his hand steady on her arm. As they walked towards Ashley's room, he tried to push down his own fears. He needed to be strong for both Gloria and Ashley. But as they approached the door, Charlie hesitated. He was scared of what he might see, scared of facing the reality of Ashley's worsening condition. He took a deep breath, steeling himself for what lay ahead. That night, Charlie sat by Ashley's bedside, the soft beeping of machines filling the quiet room. The little girl lay still, her chest rising and falling with shallow breaths. Her small hand rested on top of the blanket and Charlie gently placed his larger one over it. The dim light cast shadows across Ashley's pale face making her look even more fragile. Charlie's heart ached as he watched her sleep, remembering the bright-eyed girl who used to wave at him from her window. Hey, kiddo, he whispered, his voice barely audible. I don't know if you can hear me, but I want you to know something. 
Charlie paused, swallowing hard against the lump in his throat. He'd faced many tough situations as a police officer, but nothing had ever been as difficult as this. That wave of yours, he continued, it's meant more to me than you could ever know. Every morning, seeing your smiling face at that window, it brightened my whole day. He squeezed Ashley's hand gently, careful not to disturb the IV line. You've inspired so many people, Ashley. The whole community came together because of you. You've touched lives in ways you can't imagine. Charlie's voice cracked and he felt tears welling up in his eyes. He blinked hard, trying to keep them at bay, but they spilled over anyway, running down his cheeks. I want you to know, he said, his voice thick with emotion, that no matter what happens, I'll never stop waving back. Every morning, when I drive past your house, I'll wave. I promise. The tears flowed freely now, dropping onto the white hospital blanket. Charlie made no attempt to wipe them away. He sat there holding Ashley's hand as he silently vowed to keep his promise, come what may. Charlie's nightly prayers became a ritual, his voice a whisper in the quiet of his apartment. Every evening he'd kneel by his bed, hands clasped tightly, and beg for a miracle for Ashley. His faith, long dormant, stirred to life with each heartfelt plea. Days passed, blending into weeks. Charlie split his time between work and the hospital, his patrol car knowing the route by heart. The hospital staff grew used to seeing the officer in uniform, his face etched with worry but his eyes never losing hope. One morning, as Charlie walked into Ashley's room for his daily visit, he noticed something different. Gloria was standing by the bed, her eyes shining with unshed tears. But these weren't the tears of sorrow he'd grown accustomed to seeing. There was a glimmer of something else. Hope. Charlie, Gloria said, her voice trembling. She, she opened her eyes this morning. The doctors say there's a slight improvement. Charlie's heart leaped in his chest. He moved closer to the bed, hardly daring to believe it. Ashley lay there, her eyes open, though heavy-lidded. Her skin, while still pale, had a hint of color that hadn't been there before. A doctor entered the room, his face cautiously optimistic. Officer Brick. He nodded in greeting. As I was explaining to Ms. Gloria, Ashley's condition has shown a slight improvement. Her vital signs are stronger, and she's more responsive. Charlie listened intently, his hand unconsciously reaching for Ashley's. Now I want to be clear, the doctor continued, his tone serious. She's not out of the woods yet, but this is a positive sign, and it gives us hope. Gloria and Charlie exchanged glances, both clinging to this news like a lifeline. It was more than they had dared to hope for in weeks. As the doctor left, Charlie turned his attention back to Ashley. Her eyes found his, and she seemed to be trying to form words. Hey there, kiddo, Charlie said softly, leaning in closer. What is it? Ashley's lips moved, her voice barely a whisper. I... missed... waving. Charlie felt his heart constrict. Even in her weakened state, Ashley was thinking about their special ritual. He gently squeezed her hand, fighting back tears. I've missed it too, sweetheart, he replied, his voice thick with emotion. But don't you worry. We'll have plenty of time for waving once you're better. A tiny smile flickered across Ashley's face, weak but unmistakable. It was the most beautiful sight Charlie had ever seen. Charlie left the hospital that evening with a renewed sense of purpose. Ashley's small smile had ignited a spark in him, and he was determined to fan it into a flame. As he drove home, an idea began to take shape in his mind. The next morning, Charlie arrived at the police station earlier than usual. He gathered his fellow officers around him, his eyes shining with excitement. Listen up, everyone, he said, his voice filled with determination. I need your help with something special for Ashley. As Charlie explained his plan for a wave parade, his colleagues nodded enthusiastically. Word spread quickly through the station, and soon, everyone was on board. Charlie spent his lunch break visiting local businesses and knocking on doors in the neighborhood. He explained Ashley's story and his idea for the parade. To his amazement, people's eyes lit up, and they eagerly agreed to participate. Of course we'll be there, Mrs. Johnson from the bakery said, wiping away a tear. 
That sweet girl deserves all the love we can give her. Over the next few days, Charlie worked tirelessly to organize the event. He coordinated with the hospital staff to ensure Ashley would be by the window at the right time. He made colorful flyers and distributed them around town. His fellow officers helped spread the word, and soon it seemed like the whole town was buzzing with excitement. The day of the parade arrived and Charlie's heart raced as he drove to the hospital. He found Gloria in Ashley's room and filled her in on the surprise. Oh, Charlie, Gloria gasped, her hand flying to her mouth. This is... I don't know what to say. Charlie smiled softly. You don't need to say anything. Let's just give Ashley something to smile about. The day of the wave parade dawned bright and clear, as if the sun itself wanted to join in the celebration. Charlie arrived at the hospital early, his heart pounding with anticipation. He watched as people began to gather outside, their faces beaming with hope and love. Balloons of every color bobbed in the gentle breeze, and handmade signs with messages of support dotted the crowd. Charlie saw familiar faces from the police station, local businesses, and the neighborhood. Even strangers who had heard about Ashley's story showed up, drawn by the power of community and compassion. As the appointed time drew near, Charlie took his place at the front of the crowd. He looked up at Ashley's window, knowing that inside, Gloria was preparing to bring her daughter to see the surprise. Okay, everyone, Charlie called out, his voice strong and clear. On the count of three, let's show Ashley how much we care. One, two, three. With that, a sea of hands rose into the air. The crowd began to wave, their movements creating a ripple effect that looked like a living, breathing entity of love and support. Cheers and shouts of encouragement filled the air, rising up towards Ashley's window. Inside the hospital room, Gloria gently helped Ashley sit up in her bed. There's something special for you outside, sweetheart, she said softly, wheeling the bed closer to the window. As Gloria pulled back the curtains, Ashley's eyes widened in amazement. The sight that greeted her was beyond anything she could have imagined. Hundreds of people stood below, all waving up at her window. Colorful balloons danced in the air and she could make out signs with her name on them. For the first time in weeks, a genuine smile spread across Ashley's face. Her eyes, which had been dulled by illness and fatigue, suddenly sparkled with joy and wonder. She weakly raised her hand, waving back at the crowd. Gloria watched her daughter's reaction, tears of joy streaming down her face. She hadn't seen Ashley smile like this in so long, and the sight filled her heart with hope. She looked down at the crowd, her eyes finding Charlie in the front, leading the wave with enthusiasm. Charlie's gaze was fixed on Ashley's window, and when he saw her small hand waving back, his heart soared. He waved even more vigorously, encouraging the crowd to keep going. The energy was palpable, a tangible force of love and support rising up to embrace Ashley and her mother. Charlie felt a lump form in his throat. He watched her small hand move back and forth, her smile visible even from a distance. The sight of her, frail but filled with joy, brought tears to his eyes. Charlie couldn't contain his emotions any longer. He felt a tear roll down his cheek, but he didn't bother to wipe it away. Instead, he waved harder, his arm moving with renewed energy. He wanted Ashley to see how much she meant to him, to everyone. The crowd around him continued to wave, their enthusiasm growing as they saw Ashley's response. People cheered and called out words of encouragement, their voices blending into a chorus of support. As the wave parade continued, Charlie noticed movement inside the hospital. Nurses, doctors, and other staff members began to gather at windows throughout the building. They pressed their faces against the glass, watching the scene unfold below. Some of them joined in, waving from their positions inside. Even patients from other rooms, those who could move, made their way to windows or were helped by staff to witness the event. The hospital, usually a place of quiet concern, was alive with a different kind of energy, one of hope and community. Charlie saw an elderly man in a wheelchair, guided by a nurse, waving from a nearby window. A young boy with his arm in a cast stood at another, his good arm raised high as he joined the wave. The sight of these strangers all united in support of Ashley touched Charlie deeply. He turned back to look at Ashley's window where he could see Gloria standing beside her daughter's bed. Gloria had one arm around Ashley, the other waving to the crowd below. 
Even from a distance, Charlie could see the mix of joy and gratitude on Gloria's face. The wave parade had turned into something more than Charlie could have ever imagined. It wasn't just about Ashley anymore. It had become a moment of unity for the entire community. People who had never met Ashley were moved to tears by the display of love and support. As Charlie continued to wave, he felt a sense of awe wash over him. This simple act of kindness, this idea born from his desire to make Ashley smile, had touched so many lives. He realized that in trying to bring hope to one little girl, he had inadvertently brought hope to an entire community. As the days passed, Ashley's health continued to fluctuate. Some days she seemed stronger, her smile brighter and her voice a little louder. Other days, she lay quietly in her hospital bed, her energy drained. But through it all, the hope ignited by the community's efforts burned steadily, giving both Ashley and Gloria new strength to face each day. Charlie became a more frequent visitor to the hospital. He would often arrive after his shift, still in his uniform, carrying a new book or a small gift for Ashley. He'd sit by her bedside, his deep voice softening as he read her stories of brave princesses and kind-hearted heroes. Officer Charlie, Ashley would say, her eyes lighting up every time he entered the room. Will you read me another chapter? Charlie always obliged, happy to see the spark of joy in her eyes. He'd pull up a chair, clear his throat, and begin reading, occasionally glancing up to see Ashley's reactions to the story. Gloria watched these interactions with a grateful heart. She saw how Charlie's presence brought comfort to her daughter, and she found herself leaning on him for support as well. On the harder days, when Ashley's condition worsened, Charlie would sit with Gloria in the hospital cafeteria, listening as she shared her fears and hopes. I don't know what we'd do without you, Charlie, Gloria said one evening, her hands wrapped around a cup of lukewarm coffee. Charlie placed his hand gently on her shoulder. You're not alone in this, Gloria. We're here for you both, every step of the way. As the bond between them grew deeper, Charlie, Gloria, and Ashley formed a kind of family unit. They supported each other through the ups and downs of Ashley's treatment, finding strength in their shared experiences. Every night after Charlie had gone home and the hospital quieted down, Gloria and Ashley would pray together. They'd hold hands, Ashley's small fingers intertwined with her mother's, and bow their heads. Dear God, Gloria would begin, her voice soft but steady. Please watch over Ashley and help her grow stronger each day. Ashley would then add her own prayer, her voice barely above a whisper. Thank you for Officer Charlie and all the nice people who waved at me. Please help me get better so I can wave back from my window again. They'd end their prayer by thanking God for the support of Charlie and the community, grateful for the love that surrounded them during this difficult time. As they said amen, Gloria would kiss Ashley's forehead, both of them feeling a sense of peace wash over them. As the weeks passed, Ashley's condition began to show signs of improvement. The doctors, who had been cautiously optimistic, were now amazed by her resilience. They watched in awe as her test results improved and her strength slowly returned. One sunny morning, Dr. Johnson entered Ashley's room with a broad smile on his face. Gloria and Charlie, who had been keeping their usual vigil by Ashley's bedside, looked up expectantly. I have some wonderful news, Dr. Johnson announced. Ashley's latest tests show significant improvement. Her condition has stabilized, and we're seeing progress that, quite frankly, we didn't expect to see. Gloria's eyes filled with tears of joy as she squeezed Ashley's hand. Charlie let out a deep breath he didn't realize he'd been holding. Is it, is it really true? Gloria asked, her voice trembling with hope. Dr. Johnson nodded, his eyes twinkling. It's true. I'd call it nothing short of a miracle. Ashley, still weak but with a spark of life in her eyes, smiled up at her mother and Charlie. Does this mean I can fully stay at home now? She asked softly. We're getting there, sweetheart, Dr. Johnson replied gently. We'll need to keep you here a little longer to make sure everything's okay. But if things continue like this, you'll be home before you know it. The news spread quickly through the hospital and into the community. Charlie, with tears in his eyes, shared the update with his fellow officers and the neighbors who had rallied around Ashley. The joy was palpable as people hugged each other, some crying, others laughing in relief. Over the next few days, Ashley's strength continued to grow. She was able to sit up in bed for longer periods, 
and her appetite began to return. Gloria and Charlie watched in wonder as the little girl they had feared losing began to bloom once again. Finally, after what seemed like an eternity, the day arrived when Ashley was cleared to go home. As Charlie helped Gloria pack up Ashley's things, the little girl sat on the edge of her bed, swinging her legs excitedly. I can't wait to see my room again, Ashley said, her voice stronger than it had been in months. And my window. I want to wave to you from my window again, Officer Charlie. Charlie knelt down beside her, his eyes misty. I can't wait to see that wave, kiddo. It's the best part of my day, you know. As they prepared to leave the hospital, nurses and doctors who had cared for Ashley came to say goodbye, each marveling at her recovery. Dr. Johnson reminded them that while Ashley was well enough to go home, she would still need careful monitoring and regular checkups. As Ashley settled back into her home, a sense of normalcy began to return to her life. The familiar sights and sounds of her bedroom brought comfort after the long hospital stay. Her favorite stuffed animals lined the shelves and the sunlight streamed through her window just as she remembered. The first morning after her return, Ashley woke up early. She felt a flutter of excitement in her tummy as she climbed out of bed and made her way to the window. It was time for her special ritual. As the sun peeked over the horizon, painting the sky in soft pinks and oranges, Ashley saw Officer Charlie's patrol car turn the corner. Her face lit up with a bright smile as she raised her hand and waved enthusiastically. Charlie's heart swelled with joy when he saw the little girl at her window once again. He waved back, his eyes misty with emotion. This simple gesture, which had become so meaningful to both of them, felt even more precious now. But today was different. As Charlie continued down the street, he noticed Mrs. Thompson from next door step out onto her porch. She looked up at Ashley's window and gave a cheerful wave. Ashley giggled and waved back, surprised by the unexpected greeting. Word had spread quickly about Ashley's return, and the community wanted to show their support. Throughout the day, more neighbors passed by Ashley's house. Each one paused to look up at her window and wave. Some even called out words of encouragement. Welcome home, Ashley, Mr. Garcia shouted as he walked his dog. We missed you, sweetheart, Mrs. Lee said, blowing a kiss. Ashley's eyes grew wide with wonder. She had never realized how many people cared about her. Each wave and kind word made her feel stronger and more loved. Gloria watched from the doorway, her heart overflowing with gratitude. She saw how each friendly face lifted Ashley's spirits, bringing color back to her cheeks and a sparkle to her eyes. As the days passed, Ashley's window became a beacon of hope for the entire neighborhood. People went out of their way to pass by her house, eager to share in the joy of her recovery. Some brought flowers or small gifts, leaving them on the porch with notes of encouragement. Ashley's wave, once a private moment between her and Officer Charlie, had transformed into a symbol of community spirit and resilience. The little girl who had touched so many hearts now found herself surrounded by a circle of love and support that stretched far beyond her window. As the days turned into weeks, Charlie's visits to Ashley's home became a cherished routine. He would stop by after his shift, often bringing small gifts or treats that made Ashley's eyes light up with joy. The bond between them grew stronger with each passing day. One sunny afternoon, Charlie arrived at the house to find Gloria in the kitchen preparing dinner. She greeted him with a warm smile, the kind reserved for close friends and family. Charlie, you're just in time, Gloria said, stirring a pot on the stove. I'm making Ashley's favorite soup. Would you like to stay for dinner? Charlie's heart swelled at the invitation. I'd love to, he replied, hanging up his hat. As they worked together in the kitchen, Charlie and Gloria fell into an easy conversation. They talked about Ashley's progress, shared stories from their day, and laughed at each other's jokes. It felt natural, like they had known each other for years. In the living room, Ashley sat on the couch coloring in a book Charlie had brought her. She looked up as Charlie entered, her face breaking into a wide grin. Officer Charlie, she exclaimed, jumping up to give him a hug. Look what I drew for you. Charlie knelt down to examine the colorful drawing. It showed three stick figures holding hands, a tall one with a police hat, a medium-sized one with curly hair, and a small one with pigtails. Is this us? 
Charlie asked, his voice thick with emotion. Ashley nodded enthusiastically. You, me, and Mommy. We're a family now. Charlie felt tears prick at his eyes. He looked up to see Gloria watching them, her own eyes glistening. As they sat down to dinner, the atmosphere was warm and comfortable. Charlie helped Ashley cut her food, just as a father would. They laughed and shared stories, creating new memories together. After dinner, as Charlie was preparing to leave, Ashley tugged on his sleeve. Officer Charlie, she said softly, you know what? You're like my guardian angel. You've always been there for me, even when I was really sick. Charlie knelt down to Ashley's level, deeply touched by her words. Oh, Ashley, he said, his voice full of emotion. You're my guardian angel, too. You've brought so much joy into my life. He hugged her tightly, feeling the love and connection that had grown between them. As he stood up, he saw Gloria watching them, her eyes filled with gratitude and affection. As summer blossomed in the neighborhood, Ashley's health continued to improve steadily. Her cheeks regained their rosy hue, and her laughter echoed through the house once more. The community, touched by her story and inspired by her resilience, decided to throw a celebration in her honor. The local park was transformed into a festive wonderland. Colorful balloons bobbed in the gentle breeze, and hand-painted banners proclaimed, Welcome back, Ashley. Families gathered, bringing potluck dishes and warm smiles. The air buzzed with excitement and joy. At the center of it all stood Charlie, looking slightly uncomfortable in his dress uniform. He had been invited as the guest of Honer, a recognition that both humbled and overwhelmed him. As he watched Ashley run around with her friends, her pigtails bouncing with each step, he felt a lump form in his throat. Gloria approached him, her eyes shining with gratitude. It's time for your speech, Charlie, she said softly, squeezing his arm. Everyone's waiting. Charlie nodded, taking a deep breath as he made his way to the small podium set up near the park's gazebo. The chatter of the crowd died down as he cleared his throat, all eyes turning to him. I'm not much for public speaking, he began, his voice wavering slightly. But for Ashley, I'd do just about anything. A ripple of laughter spread through the crowd, easing his nerves. Many of you know me as Officer Brick, the guy who patrols your streets. But thanks to a little girl's wave, I became so much more. Charlie's eyes found Ashley in the crowd, and she beamed at him. Every morning, without fail, Ashley would be at her window waving at me as I drove by. It was such a small gesture, but it brightened my day in ways I can't even explain. Charlie paused, swallowing hard. What I didn't know then was how much that simple act would change my life. He went on to share how Ashley's wave had been a connection to her late father how it had grown into a bond that sustained them both through her illness. Charlie's voice cracked as he spoke about the dark days in the hospital and the hope that blossomed with each small improvement. Ashley taught me that even the smallest gestures can create the biggest impact, Charlie said, his eyes misting over. Her wave wasn't just a greeting. It was an invitation to be part of something bigger than myself. It was a reminder that we're all connected, all capable of touching each other's lives in meaningful ways. As the weeks passed, life in the neighborhood settled into a new rhythm. The summer heat gave way to the crisp air of autumn, painting the trees in vibrant hues of red and gold. Every morning, without fail, Charlie's patrol car would round the corner onto Ashley's street, his heart filled with anticipation. On this particular morning, the sun had just begun to peek over the horizon, casting a warm glow across the sleepy houses. Charlie slowed his car as he approached Ashley's home, his eyes instinctively drawn to her window. There she was, standing tall and strong, her bright eyes twinkling with joy. Ashley's small hand pressed against the glass, waving with enthusiasm. This simple gesture, once a daily routine, now carried the weight of their shared journey. It was a testament to her survival, a beacon of hope that had guided them through the darkest of times. Charlie felt his throat tighten as he raised his hand to wave back. Tears welled up in his eyes, blurring his vision for a moment. He blinked them away, not wanting to miss a second of this precious interaction. This wave was more than just a greeting. It was a celebration of life, of resilience, and of the unbreakable bond they had forged. As he waved, 
Charlie's mind flashed back to the long nights in the hospital, the fear and uncertainty that had gripped them all. He remembered the community coming together, the parade of support, and the countless small acts of kindness that had buoyed their spirits. All of it had led to this moment. Ashley, healthy and happy, continuing their special tradition. Charlie's heart swelled with a love he had never known before. This little girl had taught him more about compassion and connection than he had learned in all his years on the Force. She had shown him the true meaning of community, of family, and of unwavering hope in the face of adversity. As he drove away, Charlie knew that he would carry this moment with him forever. The image of Ashley at her window, waving with such joy and strength, would be etched in his memory. It was a reminder of the power of human connection, of how even the smallest gestures could change lives in profound ways. If you enjoyed the story of Officer Brick and Ashley, I handpicked this next story that will touch your heart. Please don't miss this one. Click here to watch it.